So team, welcome to implementation of Agile. Basically, we, we advertise it as Agile testing with uh, VSO, Visual Studio Online or Team Services. Uh, but what we predominantly look at is uh, not just the testing part, but we will mainly look at the complete implementation perspective, how a project will be dealt with uh, Agile methodology. That is the first thing. And uh, the medium or the tool that we're going to use is the popular one, Microsoft Visual Studio Online or Team Services. There are competitors to it, like in the form of uh, Zira, and even the IBM Rational Manager, etc. Uh, this is one another set of tool that generally people use it, uh, and small teams definitely go with this. Uh, uh, in case if they have a team of five people, because up to five people, it's anyway free, and it's a cloud-based. So we'll take this Visual Studio Online as a tool uh, for discussion discussion of this entire Agile implementation. So today it's going to be a a quick orientation session just to understand the overall perspective of what you're going to learn in the complete set of uh, 15 sessions that what we're going to deal. Uh, you'll just get an idea of that. Please feel free to ask questions in between. You can uh, you know, put it in the chat, then I will be answering it as, as it is a relative. Normally, we generally don't open it for uh, you know discussion around this. But if required, if somebody has really a question that, that we wanted to discuss, I'll unmute you and then we can have a discussion around it. So that it can become an interactive one. So the agenda is very simple. We're going to understand a little bit of introduction to agile software development. So let me ask how many of you are already aware of Agile software development or how many of you are already working, let's say. It not required to be working, but how many of you are already aware of Agile, Agile development? Anybody has heard of the Agile development with uh, any any other things, Scrum, Kanban or different methodologies, heard of these different things like sprints, product backlog, user stories, sprint, black, sprint bar, uh, backlog, ceremonies like you know sprint planning, stand-up meetings, retrospections, etc. So I can see that Preeti said both yes and uh, Agile with Scrum and Kanban, Preeti. Fani said yes, Jira probably as a tool you might have used for Agile, yeah, that's fine. Right, so rest of you, can I assume that you might have just heard of this, but you might have not really seen the implementation or you might have not really used any of the tool as such for Agile software development. Is that a fair assumption for the rest of the 9 to 10 people that we have? But either of the way, I'm going to deal it from the fundamentals, so no worries on that but this is just to get a, a glimpse of it. So we will be uh, quickly, that is probably in the next session, we'll be quickly discussing the overall software development and then uh, we'll look at the traditional waterfall development life cycle and we will look at what are the advantages with that, disadvantages with that and how the, uh, you know, the birth of agile software development came into picture, how it has got uh, evolved into the market, what are the advantages, what are the disadvantages uh, we'll, we'll discuss with Agile software development in the first session. Also, for time permits, I'll introduce you to the different uh, models of the Agile as well. Then we'll have an introduction around uh, Scrum, that is the one that we pro uh, majorly we're going to discuss over the sessions. Also, just quickly look at other software development models in, in the form of Agile. So we'll have a quick discussion around Scrum and Sprints. Then what are the different roles uh, in Agile? Like, you know, here we use a slightly different terminologies, not like project manager, developer, tester, or a support engineer, etc. So we will be having discussion around what are the different major roles in the form of Agile. Like product owner is what we call it as, uh, Scrum master, and then the actual 
team, the together developer, tester, support engineer, everybody, we call it as a scrum team. So we'll, we'll have a discussion around those and we'll talk about what are their roles and responsibilities uh, during the agile development. Any idea how this word agile came into picture? What is the meaning of agile? So what we're going to do, whatever the discussions that I'll make it over here, we'll make it as a notes. Uh, I, and then I'll be sharing this document with you. So any idea uh, what is the meaning of Agile? So one thing that we will have is discussion around Agile software development, the roles in Agile, direction to Scrum and Sprint. So yeah, um, pretty saying rapid changing. Yeah, that's one definitely, uh, one of the synonym that we can take and there is one of the Agile methodology of development is called RAD. RAD stands for uh, is this visible or you want me to increase the font or anything? So there is a methodology. Called RAD. So this is also one of the agile methodology. It stands for rapid application development. Like the way we have scrum we do have another methodology called rapid application development. So rapidly changing, quickly changing, dynamically changing. So that is what is the meaning of Agile. So just to give you a glimpse of, anyway we'll, we'll be having a detailed discussion around it, but to give you a picture of it. In the olden days, if you consider the uh, scenarios of software development around five, six years back, most of the time we used to have the projects running it for six months, one year, even we used to have two years of projects. I worked on a two years project uh, during the term of 2008 to 2010. And the project took almost two years, right from the requirements to the complete implementation and go live, it was two years. Such a big project also we used to do it. And the kind of waterfall model that we're going to look at it in detail in the next one is is was the best for those things where things are not going to change rapidly. Things were pretty constant. The requirements what we had with the our, our product owner. Product owner was not really from Scrum that I'm using but our real product owners, our product customers was not really changed much within those two years of time. So whatever we accepted in the beginning as a requirement what we implemented at the end of the project life cycle with the small small changes during the user acceptance testing was really good enough for the system to live and the system is being continuing from like 2010 to even today. But that's not the case in today's life cycle. In today's life cycle, the business life cycle, if you see any customer business, be it a insurance related customers or be it a healthcare related domain, or we call it as it's BFSA, banking, financial, and you know insurance sectors. You consider any of those sectors, things are changing very, very dynamically. Financial sector, you know, the kind of tax rules that we will have, they keep changing every year. The health insurance related things will change very rapidly, right? So Considering these dynamic changes in the form of requirements, the traditional model of waterfall, doing it for about six months, least to least waterfall used to be three months. Like what we used to have is, uh, we used to have something called quarterly releases. And some of the projects, which we could not do all the requirements at one time, we used to do as a quarterly releases, 
and what we do in this quarterly releases is like um, we used to have every uh, February one quarterly release and then you know May we used to have one release and then we have August we used to have one quarterly release and then we have November we used to have one quarterly release. So we used to do we used to have the requirements from the customer all the time, but since we cannot develop all at one shot, like as I told you, if I have to develop it, it goes for a two years of project, we used to do in the form of quarterly releases, like whatever we can deliver within three months. So for example, we have done with, let's say, February. For the next May, what we can deliver in the three months, we used to capture them and deliver it in the May. And again, May, we used to start capturing the requirements and deliver it in August. So that is the least to least waterfall model that uh, quarterly release was one of the thing. Even this is becoming a big time when it comes to today's world with the kind of dynamically changing requirements, as, as Preeti said, rapidly changing requirements. So what we are going to do in the form of agile releases is you will do anywhere from four to six weeks, it's typically the delivery time. But there are companies who do standard four weeks. There are companies who do standard two weeks. There are companies who do standard one week. And there are some releases or projects which will happen in one day. You will get a requirement in the morning and then you will deliver it by evening. Typically any software that you do, these are the different phases you will have whatever it is like I'm not going to make discussion around agile just understand today but you will have to understand the requirements from the customer so we call it as a requirement analysis and then you will have a, a design for that what customer is looking for then you will go for coding or development then you will do the testing you can call it as testing or stabilization. Then of course uh, UAT will happen, users will test it. Then we will go for implementation or you can call it as deployment. Then comes the maintenance. If you keep the maintenance aside, maintenance is somewhere after implementation when the customers are using it if they're really looking for any uh, changes either in the form of enhancements or changes to the previously given requirement or maybe they found some issue during the usage of the system so we will be taking care of that as a maintenance so if you leave the maintenance part aside for every new requirement that you get from the customer you're going to do all these things you'll analyze what he's actually looking for you come up with a high level and low level design then you do uh, nowadays people even do prototype but with agile again it's not really uh, it will do a very quick prototype if, if the project is going to be really four to six weeks we do a quick prototype as as needed then we do the actual coding or development then we'll do the testing or stabilization so this is previously the testing used to start only after the coding or development, the actual testing, but the testers used to be involved right from requirements, design and everything. So we'll change we'll see how this is going to be slightly different in Agile. That's where the Agile testing is a popular thing. So we'll look at that. And then we discuss around the user acceptance testing and finally implementation of deployment. Whether it is a one year project, whether it is a one day project, typically you're going to do all these things. Now, if I'm just talking about a one day thing, that means you will get a requirement in the morning. So team analyze that, maybe they just spend about one hour in analyzing it, what is that customer is actually looking for, and then they will come up with some small design changes, how it is going to be for the existing system. I don't expect a prototype to be done here, but let's say coding may happen for about two hours and then testing may happen for about one one point five hours and then we give it for the users let's say users will take about 
one hour for the validating the system and then putting into production, let's say one hour. So that's it. So morning you get a requirement, what the customers are looking for and by evening you are going to deliver it. So there are some projects which are happening this quickly or this, this much of, you know, I would say rapidly implementation. There are some projects in which they do the testing directly in production as well. So that is also another concept that is coming up because they will not really have, think of these, uh, you know, dynamically e-commerce domains are the best things. For example, if there is an upcoming holiday season and if the companies wants to implement uh, uh, some new discounting model, they cannot really do for about waterfall like, you know, three months of a project or six months of a project or the least to least uh, quarterly release. They cannot really do that. Let's say the holiday season is coming up in two weeks, so they have to deliver it in two weeks and it has to be used by the people the actual upcoming holiday season. Otherwise, even the next day if you deliver, it's of no use. So, the requirements are changing dynamically. Customers may not have a clear picture to give you all the requirements at one shot. That is one of the primary reasons why this Agile came into picture. But previously, that was not the case. So, they used to come up with the requirements and they were not generally changing so dynamically. So that's where the waterfall model was sufficient. So we'll discuss all those things uh, in, in the first topic that is probably the next class itself. And uh, here basically who interacts with, I'll just quickly touch upon each of them. So let me know if you have any questions uh, that, that you want me to cover it up as part of this, so which I'll be taking it up. Now previously in the waterfall, we used to call somebody's like project manager, or product manager, if it is a project. Uh, is everybody clear the difference between what is project and product? Or anybody needs an introduction for that? What is project and product? Or just, just both of them are same or? Are these both same? No, is there any difference? Okay. So there are two Preetis who are very active. I'm not really sure about others that that you're clear with everything or not sure whether you don't want to share your opinions. So just make it interactive so that you know the others also will be on the same page. Okay, so but what I can definitely get from two Preetis is that they are different. So uh, they have not expressed it in what way they are different, but somehow they feel they are definitely different. Mm, project manager may handle several products. Okay, let's not worry about this manager for some time. Let's just understand the term project and product. Let's, let's not worry about the managing stuff. <clears throat> so generally when you have Okay, Vijaya says project means as a whole, okay, product like an application, okay, product is an individual concept, good, like some of you are at least sharing what, what is that you heard of so far, um, good that I have assumed and then started doing, you know, explaining project management, product management, etc., but uh, let me explain what is project or let me let me just yeah 
So you have, this is like, simple way to define is this is specific to one client or customer. Suppose, let's say there is a, there's some kind of a business application, there's some kind of a business going on, think of something, and that particular, uh, you know, company owner will go to a software company and then explain this is my business, this is how the business starts, this is how I will get the quotations, this is how I will look into my warehouse whether I have the products or not, then I'll go to my manufacturing unit for the manufacturing of them, then I will, you know, prepare it for a packing, then I will ship it to my customer, then customer will make the payments and then it will go into my uh, accounts. Some some sort of workflow he is explaining and then he is saying till now we were doing all this through Excel and managing it through uh, most of the time with Microsoft Excel but we need some software solution and that too if possible uh, online web based because my business is expanding into different uh, zones of the you know country, world, whatever it is. So I need some kind of a software to help me with that. And what the company is going to do is, it is specific to that particular client or customer. So they will gather the complete requirements from the client, they will do the design specific to the client, show it to the client, then they will do a small prototype, show it to the client and then say, yeah, this is what I am looking for. Then they will actually start the project development, be it waterfall, be it agile, I am not getting there. Then they will do the testing and they'll ask the customer also to do testing and then they'll go and implement it. So that is what is typically project. Project is specific to one client or customer. And the solution that the company has developed may not be used, may or may not be used by other customers because it's very, very specific to the client that what we are actually dealing with. Sometimes what happens, today we got one client with a specific business requirement, but when we have implemented the solution, we understood there are a lot of things can be used by other customers as well. There are other people who want to do the similar business. And then what we are doing is we are taking out all those components and creating it as a software solution or a package and then we started selling it to similar customers who are doing the similar business. Like we got a customer with certain requirements, let's name it as A, and then we implemented a solution to the A, he's very happy. And now that code, we modified little bit of here and there to make it as a common solution that works for similar business people like A, like there are B and C and T kind of customers who are working on the similar lines and then we have started selling it to them. So that is what we call it as a product. Product is uh, generic to all customers. Example, you can take MS Office for example. Microsoft does not do this for specific to anybody. Like you know, whoever needs of this MS Office package, they just go and install or you know go with the Office 365 or whatever. The one that we are going to discuss, Visual Studio Online or Team Services, right? This is a product. Why? Because anybody wants to implement an Agile, anybody wants to go with the Agile software development, any company, be it uh, a company that is running out of US, be a company that is running out of India, anywhere, naming XYZ company, so anybody can go for it who wants to go with the Agile development they can use this product called Visual Studio Online or Team Services. Similarly, can you name a few products that you can think of at this moment? Any of these testing tools, like you know, you can call it as Selenium, QTP, UFT, all these are products. The biggest example that we are using, GoToMeeting, is a product. So is the difference clear now what is a project and a product? Uh, team viewer, whatever, correct, for sharing the screens. So that is a difference. And uh, previously we used to call in waterfall, this is the role. 
and his role was to basically interact with client, uh, customer and uh, capture the requirements. What, what is the customer that is already looking at it? So that was a major role, but in uh, when I was trying to talk about the second point is where we are discussing. But in Agile, what we are going to do, we are going to specifically call him as product owner. We call him as specifically product owner. There is nothing like project owner or anything. His role is going to be pretty much the same. He will be interacting with client or customer. Capture the requirements. But only thing we call it as in the form of user stories. Okay. Here we used to write uh, requirements in the form of SRS, software requirement specification or functional specification. But as a product owner, here he will be capturing it is something called user stories. So we will clearly understand one or two examples of how to write user stories. And when we go into the tool, the tool we would start using it from day three or day four. Then I will be showing how to write user stories in the Visual Studio team services. And then who will be creating that is a product owner's job. Here there is one more person also used to help him interact with client or customer and capture the requirements in the form of SRS or FS. Uh, he, he may or may not used to be directly involved. There was a, another role that was used in Waterfall. Waterfall was the business analyst. There was a specific role called business analyst as well as the project manager. Both used to. First business analyst used to talk to him. Then he used to come up with something called BRS, business requirement specification. Then the project manager used to prepare an SRS or FS based on the BRS. So that was a model that was working there. But here it is totally called product owner who will be actually as, as the name says he is the owner of the product. And he will be contacting to the customers try to get the requirements what they are actually looking for which we have to implement in the next one week or one month or six weeks of agile development what we are going to do. And he used to write it in the form of user stories. That is the primary role of product owner. And then we have a special role uh, called Scrum Master in the form of Agile. So this person is going to be mainly uh, ensuring the Scrum team delivers the required software on time with quality etc. So typically he is like team lead within the scrum team. So before that let's talk about a scrum team. So typically there will be a scrum team of uh, seven to nine people. Seven to nine people is what makes a scrum team. That includes everybody. Developer, testing team, and if we need any operations team like you know to take care of the environments, etc. All includes we will have about seven to nine people. And one of these person will be the scrum master. And his job is to ensure all these seven to nine people are working towards one common goal and they are all motivated and they are all doing their deliverables on a daily basis 
there is no slippage in the form of schedule. So ensuring all that, no, there is no nothing called business analyst. Directly product owner is the one who will be interacting. Okay, Preeti has a question. Won't the business analyst be there in Scrum team? No. Product owner is the one who will be interacting with the clients or customers and trying to capture all the requirements of them in the form of user stories. There are few companies will still maintain or still have the business analysts but depending on the product complexity. <coughs> they can have a business analyst uh, to to sell the product or you know or they can also involve in the very inceptional or you know initialization of the stage when they wanted to do a market research market you know study to what kind of customers that we have what kind of requirements or products that they are looking at so at that level they can prepare one small you know document like for example we wanted to come up with a new tax calculation system so these business analysts will analyze the different type of customers who will be using that uh, they can prepare you know a high level document but once we have got a potential customers talking to those customers capturing the requirements specifically for them is actually the product owner job does it answer your question Preeti Vijay has a question can the same members also belong to another project or scrum team so typically what happens in Agile is a quick delivery. Quick delivery and the timelines that I have just showed you, some teams will do it in four to six weeks, but some teams will do it in two weeks and some teams will do it in one week. So it is very, very difficult for the team to focus on the same deliverable and deli you know, complete it within the one week. Generally, it is not a practice of using the same scrum team for different teams or different projects. It's not really a good idea because the time that we have is a short and within the time, uh, so generally, I'll, I'll, I'll introduce all these things in little more detail in the next session, but what will happen is, when I say scrum, how generally the agile works is, in agile, these are fixed. I would say, Time is fixed, budget is fixed, you cannot change time, you cannot change budget. Means if you have promised to the customer that we will deliver every two weeks, every two weeks you have to deliver it to the customer. There's no way that you will extend it by a week or extend it by uh, a day. You will deliver it in two weeks. Okay, the time is fixed. Then how budget is fixed? Because you, you inform to the client sorry client saying we are nine people that are going to work in the project including scrum master so totally nine people let's assume uh, you know maybe four dev uh, three test one operations team one scrum team scrum master let's say totally nine people we have and average they calculate how much they are doing the billing per hour or per day or per whatever it is and then they will come up with a monthly salary and then they inform to the client, this is the budget that we are going to charge for you every month. Then only thing that can change in Agile typically is, these are constant, these generally don't change. Every year maybe uh, budget may change, but typically within the one year, the time that we are going to deliver, the budget that we are going to get from the customer is not going to change. The only thing that can change is scope. What you can deliver in the sprint timelines. Probably, let's say the customer has given 10 things to do. He expected 10 different user stories that he has given. But in one sprint, let's say the upcoming sprint, we can do only one user story itself. We can only do one user story. In one other sprint, since the stories are simple, we may do two user stories. In another sprint, we may do three user stories. 
Again, in another sprint, we can do only one user story. So what you can deliver, the scope, that can change. But the time and the budget is not going to change. Considering all this, why I'm explaining all this is, anyway, I would have explained it in a different purpose, but Vijay's question uh, will be more relevant if I answer this. Considering all this, using the same team for a different scrum team or a different project is not really going to help. Because they have to be focused, they have to focus on the product and the user stories that we are working and deliver within the one week or two weeks of time. So does it answer your question, Vijay? All right, so product owner is the one who will be actually interacting with the client and then coming up with user stories. Scrum master is the one who will be taking care of the entire Scrum team uh, to be focused on the product that we are developing so that we can deliver it on time. No compromising of the quality. Everything what required needs to be tested being tested by the testing team. Uh, for example, if the developers are after writing the code, they have to do proper code reviews, they are doing the proper code reviews, they are doing the unit testing, testing team is doing the integration testing, system testing, uh, they are using the automation that is already available, everything. So, and, and one more point that I want to touch upon in Agile, since the things are going to be very fast, quick and uh, uh, deliverables, automation places a major role in Scrum, uh, places a major role in Agile. The reason because for any regression testing you cannot depend only on manual testing which is going to be a time consuming. That's why people do a lot of you know automation in Agile so that they can run the regression part, regression testing through the automation. So I'm not, I'm not covering the automation part of it here but I'll, I'll try to highlight the importance of automation as much as possible so that uh, you can focus on that as well. Does a domain or functional consultants or expects work with product owner? Yes, yes, so that is definitely required because product owner is more of a technical person, technical plus a project management kind of an experienced person. But uh, if you're talking about something like an enterprise related uh, solution, definitely functional consultants do come into picture. For example, let's say you are developing uh, a new tax calculation system. The, the product owner that we have is may not be from a tax background or income tax related background or maybe is not from a financial background at all. So then he may take the help of some of these functional consultants but considering the agile, he is out of the scope. So he might uh, work at the organizational level and do help us uh, in the need of the hour, but not really as part of the Scrum team that, you know, he's going to help us only to have the user stories refined better. So that is the product owner and the functional consultant works together with customers and, and you know, he, they will come up with a nice user stories. Uh, and when I say nice, it's like detail and required all information, etc. So from there onwards, the actual Scrum team work starts. So they do work with functional consultants as and when required. Okay, so that's what, so ensuring the deliverables are going on time. So for that, Scrum, I'll, I'll be again talking about these in detail, but just to give a quick idea. He will be conducting, Scrum Master will be conducting three ceremonies which are very important. We will be discussing each one in detail. If uh, you guys are very much interested, I would like to even do some kind of a, uh, maybe the next, uh, maybe at the last four or five sessions, you can even do a kind of a role play. For example, uh, if you have, let's say right now we have 18 people. And if you are going to have these 18 people as it is, what I can do, I can create it as a two scrum teams. And then uh, we will be taking some of these user stories and then we will will act like a different people. Like, you know, uh, let's say some of them you are going to act like a developer, some of them you're going to act like a tester, some of them you're going to act like a support engineer. We'll create a couple of tasks related to uh, each of these different roles. And the next day when you're coming for the session, you can actually, you need to update those tasks. You don't need to really walk them as, as understanding perspective, but you do update them saying, you know, 
I have completed this much percentage of this task and this much percentage is pending. Uh, let's say for example, if a developer has to develop some of the component and if you are working as a, if you are representing as a developer, so you will update the task with your required comments and, and come back to the next session so that we can actually see the sprint burn down chart. So in, in what happens in sprints is like uh, Scrum Master will daily look at it how the team is progressing through a graph called uh, sprint burn down chart. So we can clearly see that how the team is actually uh, doing it with the two teams that we have here. Okay, so when it comes to ceremonies that Scrum Master is going to take care of, one very detailed, almost day long, it's going to happen is called sprint planning. That is the first one that, that almost it can happen for a half a day to day where the team, after the user stories are created, they will, they will understand those user stories and create the tasks what they actually wanted to do in the next uh, let's assume the scrum is about the, the sprint is about four weeks. So what they wanted to deliver in the next four weeks of time, they will come up with a detailed tasks list and assign it to each resource like developer, tester, uh, the operations team, etc. And that's going to be a very very detailed planning meeting, which almost happens for a half day to day depending on the kind of user stories that we have. And Scrum Master is the one who will be completely owning that, driving that, ensuring the team is uh, definitely not to men, you know, uh, need, need to mention it here is that I do actually come from totally a testing background, but since the kind of domain knowledge that I had, uh, I even worked as Scrum Master for about two years uh, before I switched my current job recently. So Scrum Master is the one who will be completely owning this sprint planning, driving this planning meeting, ensuring that everybody has a detailed uh, tasks that they can actually complete in one day. For example, if a developer is creating some tasks, it should not be uh, too long tasks that you know it will take one week of time. No, because one week is almost like a 25% of the actual time that we have, which is four weeks. And if you create one task which is going to be four weeks, you cannot really keep track of it, whether it is going in the right direction or not in the right direction. So as a Scrum Master, it is my job to ensure the team is actually creating the tasks which can be done on the same day. They start in the morning and complete in the same day. That smaller level, they have to go and create the tasks. So basically, uh, here we do, team creates the tasks that can be completed in one single day. Like that everybody will do it. Developer, tester, operations team. And they also provide estimates for that. They provide estimates how much time that is going to take. So this is one of the very important meeting that uh, Scrum Master drives it. Uh, Preeti, you're saying, I hear a background whistling. Okay, I just ensure, is it too much of noise or okay to manage it for today? Average. Okay, sure, I wish <laughs> I'll ensure my surroundings are kind of be clear. So I, I switched to a new flat recently. I've been associated with ITL for almost two years now. I regularly take these sessions and uh, yeah, I need to shift my place basically. So we have uh, sprint planning and then we have something called uh, daily stand-up meeting that's going to happen. So this is where the team will come and discuss what they're actually doing it. So this is typically going to be long last for only 15 minutes, not more than that at any point of the time. And the team will just come and say what they have worked on, what they're actually working on, what they have completed yesterday, what they're working today, and what they're planning to do tomorrow. So 
these are the three things that they're going to answer it. And previously in waterfall, since the deliveries are going to be like every three months or six months or one year, uh, the this, this teams actually used to meet once in a week, weekly status meeting. And within the one week, they used to discuss how the project status, whether it is on track, on schedule, etc., etc., with respect to budget, time, and everything. And the meeting used to long last for almost 45 minutes to one hour. Everybody used to give their status, what they have worked in the last week, what they are actually planning to do next week, and if they have any roadblocks, etc. So there, it's okay because the project timelines was almost six months, and if you are sitting for one hour in a week with the whole team, is it? It's okay. And lots of time, team used to complete the status in 40, 45 minutes, and then uh, they generally used to do a time for a quick discussion around how was the weekends, what are the next weekend plans, general chit chat. That's fine because we used to have time. But now, since it's going to be a short four weeks of delivery, we don't have that luxury of uh, having the discussion. So we will be having only a quick daily stand-up meeting for about 15 minutes. Within the 15 minutes, all the nine people are going to talk. So you can expect how many, how much time you would get it. Not even two minutes. So just hardly one, one and a half minutes you will get it. And within the one, one and a half minutes, you have to talk about what did you, what did you do yesterday? What are you planning to do today? And is there any roadblock? And it is a scrum master job to ensure nobody's prolonging the discussion for not more than 15 minutes, exactly 15 minutes. And you can see the name. It's just a stand-up. You have to stand and discuss. Not even you have a time to sit and relax and talk about uh, this thing. So within the 15 minutes, you have to complete. Everybody should complete. And Scrum Master take away from this is if someone says, I have a roadblock. Let's say, for example, I am depending on uh, developer one to complete this component so that I can uh, actually start testing this. So then it's a Scrum Master job to coordinate with, with those two people and, and, you know, kind of ensure there is no roadblock and the delivery is going to happen. So that is daily stand-up meetings. We'll discuss in detail again uh, when we talk about each of these. And then at the end of the sprint, he's going to conduct something called a sprint retrospection. As a whole team, uh, you know, what went well in the, in the sprint, what could not really went well, what did not go well, and uh, what is that they can improve in the next sprint. So that's again at the end of the sprint, after the delivery is completed, they are all going to meet and discuss about this. So these three ceremonies are, you know, events. <coughs> it is Scrum Master who will be taking care of it. Sprint planning, daily stand-up meeting, and retrospection. So that's what the <coughs> sorry, high-level roles of what product owner, Scrum Master, and team job is very simple. Uh, not really simple, of course. You have to do the actual work. Plus, you have to detail, create your tasks very in detail. And you have to update your tasks on a daily basis before you come for the Scrum meeting. Because the burn down chart, uh, if you don't update, it doesn't look properly in the sense it doesn't look the way it is expected. And the Scrum Master will have lots of questions why you have not updated. Uh, are you really working, not working? Do you have any roadblocks? So those kind of discussions that we will have around it. So you create the tasks, you burn them, and then you update them, all that. Okay, Vijay has one more question, uh, two questions in fact. She asked, how often product owner part of the stand-up meeting? Not really, uh, definitely not daily, but I used to kind of call him when there are certain things then and there if we need to clarify. For example, one of the Scrum team member had a question and the only, uh, as a Scrum master, I cannot completely answer that question because it has to be, uh, the product owner will have a little more visibility because he will be the one regularly talking to customer. So what customer is expecting from this particular feature change, product owner will be the best person. So we used to involve him as in the need basis, maybe once in a week, twice in a week, depending on the need. Uh, product owner will not have only one of your scrum team, he will have a number of other scrum teams also, uh, he's owning it actually. So he will be visiting each of those scrum teams on a 
alternated day basis, two, three days basis, so that he will come to our stand-up meeting. So we generally ensure the different teams will have this stand-up meeting in different times so that the product owner can be part of all these, but not really daily required. Uh, second question, oh, there are two different Vijayas actually. So the first question is Vijay, a different one, and the other one is from a different Vijay. Is Scrum team going to involve in sprint review? Is Scrum team going to involve in sprint review? Uh, when I say sprint review, can you please elaborate a little bit of it? You're talking about the retrospection or anything else? Oh yeah, definitely. So, um, okay, this is another very, very important point. Since the time is very short, we do a lot of showcase. We do a lot of demos to the client. We don't want to take any chances. Being at the end of the one month, uh, customer should not say, no, no, this is not what I have expected. I have expected the product. No, we don't want like that. So what we will do as soon as we complete the prototype or a small piece that we can actually showcase it, we'll get an opinion from the customer. So in that scrum team places major, of course product owner can, if required, can do it alone, but let me tell you, most of the times I used to do it as scrum master. The reason because you're almost like a, I will say second level of a PM from an older technology, but older implementation perspective. So. Uh, most of the Scrum team takes that uh, responsibility to de demo it to the customer. Product owner will be there. He will be like a bridge between you and client. For example, you implemented something. Client says, no, 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 this is what we have expected. Then product owner will pitch in. Uh, and then, you know, no, as per the discussion that you and we had in so-and-so meeting, you agreed this, so that's what I've been forwarded to Scrum team, and Scrum team is implemented this, so he will, he will be the bridge between you and the client. Right, so any other questions that you have at the moment? Yes, documentation is very less compared to waterfall. That's what I'm going to discuss more in detail when I talk about waterfall and, and agile. But it a lot of people say no documentation. That is totally wrong. It's not no documentation. It is less documentation. You have rightly said it's a very less correct. Less documentation, not no documentation. A lot of people say no documentation, which is not correct. Okay, so we will be discussing uh, these things more in detail in the next one. Uh, then we'll start with each of these topics. So the total duration will be about 15 sessions. And the tool that we're going to use is the Visual Studio Online or Team Services. As I told you, uh, if we have the same set of people, I'll make it into two Scrum teams. And then we will uh, create tasks for each of you, create sprints for each of you. And then you will also be just updating before coming to the next session so that we can do, do the sprint, burn down charts, everything properly. We can do a role play of stand up, how it should be conducted. We can do role play of sprint planning meetings, uh, retrospection meetings and everything. So that when you complete it, you will actually walk through the complete implementation of an Agile. So you can ready to go and start work in a team where Agile is already being practiced. You don't need to really get confused or you don't need to really have much of the discussions around that to get familiar. So does it sound good? Um, any questions that you have at this moment that I can answer? So we have a couple of sessions lined up. So there is one more session which Karthik is going to start in a few minutes on the same bridge. So I'll be leaving it for him. But do you have any questions at this moment that I can quickly answer? Otherwise, we can catch up through emails. Uh, so today, post the session, you all will receive an email with this video. So we can re go through, you know, we can go through it once again, and then be prepared for the next one if you have any questions. All right. So thank you all for joining. Have a uh, good evening, good night, good morning, wherever you're from. See you in the next session. Thank you all.